Okay, so we're gonna talk about infinity in this video. For a mathematician, it can be a really vague term, and for someone who's not that familiar with mathematics, it might just be this really big, unattainable number. We're gonna be talking about infinity as an amount of things in a set, or a set's carnality. So for example, this singleton set has a cardinality of one, and this set has a cardinality of 10. And a set like the natural numbers is one example of a set of infinite cardinality. Infinite is not very specific here, and the goal of this video is to prove to you that this is the case. But first, we need to start talking about how to equate sets in cardinality. Let's take B sets of cardinality three really quickly. We can see that there are three elements in each set, but instead of enumerating the elements of both sets with one, two, and three, we can also enumerate the second set with the first set, like so. And from this enumeration, there is a function f that is defined by the following equalities. Mathematically, the existence of a function like this is what we would define as two sets of the same cardinality. That is, two sets have the same cardinality if there exists a bijection from the first set to the second set. And bijection is what I mean when I say like the function between the sets of cardinality three over there. That is, a bijection is a function that is injective, meaning if two things in the domain are sent to the same thing in the codomain, then those two things in the domain were actually equal. And it's surjective, meaning that for each thing in the codomain, there is something in the domain that is sent to it by the function. Here is an injection that is not a surjection, and here is a surjection that is not an injection, just to give you an idea of why these things are two different properties. Up until this point, all the examples we have been working with have been with finite sets, but you're probably wondering about the natural numbers, because I, I said it was a set of infinite cardinality, and what bijections exist between it and other popular sets. So let's go ahead and first look at the integers. Your intuition may lead you to believe that the integers are twice as large as the natural numbers because of the negative numbers in the integers, but that's actually not the case. If you want to take a moment to think about a bijection that exists between the two sets, now would be a good time to go ahead and pause and think about it. Okay, so in order to form this bijection, we're going to let the even numbers go to the positive integers the odd numbers go to the negative integers, and zero go to zero. I point out zero specifically because sometimes people don't use the natural numbers as with zero, and sometimes they do, so this can be like kind of a weird place when you're reading math, but just to be specific, two is gonna go to one, and zero goes to zero. The formula for this bijection is given by this function. And if you weren't able to figure this out, now would be a really good time to check that this is actually a bijection. Next, let's look at the real numbers. We're actually gonna prove that the real numbers are really, really large, and we're gonna do so using lists. Notice that any bijection from the natural numbers to a set can be written as an infinite list. So listing these natural numbers in this way is the same thing as defining a function like so. Assuming there is a bijection between the natural numbers and the reals, we can create then a list using the decimal expansion of real numbers, like so, where each of these digits is between 0 and 9, and the expansion is denoted by the concatenation of these digits. The bijection asserts that this list is complete, so every number should be here, every real number that is. If we find a number outside the list that is a real number, we're going to have a contradiction because then our list wasn't complete. And so we'll know that no bijection exists, and in particular, we'll be showing that no surjection exists as no natural number would hit that constructed element that's not in our list. If you want to take a moment to figure out how to make the element that is not in the list, again, now would be a good time to pause, but I'll go through it in a second. Alrighty, so. We're going to go ahead and look at the diagonal digits in our list. So that is like x00, x11, x22, x33, and so forth. And we're going to go ahead and create a number b such that the first digit of b is not the first digit of the first number in our list. That is, the first digit of b does not equal x sub 00. The second digit of b is not the second digit of the second number in our list, so the second digit of b is not equal to x sub 11. 
and we can keep going and doing this for each diagonal thing and making sure that it's not equal to the digit in the decimal expansion of B at that given place. We just have to be careful that we're not gonna end with any repeating nines or zeros in our constructed digit, but that's actually okay and we can make sure that happens because for each digit in B, we actually have nine different digits to choose from. B by construction is not in the list because it doesn't equal any of the other things in the list. And thus, there is no bijection, and in particular, we can fit the naturals inside of the reals, but we can't hit all of the reals with the naturals. And so we have an infinite set that is larger in cardinality than the natural numbers. The existence of another cardinality of infinity is what defines countability and uncountability. That is, a set is countably infinite if its cardinality is equal to that of the natural numbers, and it's uncountably infinite if its cardinality is strictly larger than the, the cardinality of the natural numbers. This is great, but again, this terminology is a bit vague, a little bit less vague than just infinity, but to show why, we're gonna go ahead and talk about the power set construction, which is the power set of a set is the set of all subsets of that set. So if we have a set of two elements, like here, the power set will have these four subsets as elements. If you're thinking about size, this example might lead you to believe that power sets are always larger in cardinality than their corresponding set. So let's just prove it. All right, let's assume that there is a bijection from a set to its power set. Then for each element in the power set of A, there is an element of A that the bijection sends to it. Notice as well that the function applied to ele any element of A is a set. So A is either in F of A or A is not in F of A. We're going to use this binary fact to create a new set B that can't be hit by applying the function to anything in A. That is, if A is in F of A, then we're going to not have it in B. And if A is not in F of A, then we're going to have it in B. By definition of B, there is no A in our set A such that F of A is equal to B. And this gives our contradiction. And it's much the same way as how we got the contradiction between the natural numbers and the real numbers. That is, the contradiction to there being a bijection arises from the proposed bijection not being surjective. Thus, we know that the cardinality of our set A must be strictly less than the cardinality of the power set of A. This proof and the one that is used to show the reals are larger than the naturals use an argument style called diagonalization. So if you're interested in searching around for more similar proofs, uh, it's used a lot in other fields of math like in computing theory as well. But the point of talking about the power set construction was to show that uncountability is really vague. Using the power set, we can construct larger and larger infinities in terms of cardinality. Hence the title of this video. Anyhow, looking at this ordering here, if you want more practice with this idea or want to work on constructing bijections and, or using diagonalization arguments, you might want to figure out where the rationals and the power set of n or the power set of the naturals fit in into this ordering here. And that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more mathematics videos. This video was made in part due to a suggestion in the comments, so if you have any math things you want me to cover, you can leave them in the comments down below. As always, I am Nathan, this is Chalk, and I will see you next time.